How to format APA 7th edition student papers by Grammar Rich in less than 10 minutes. Here we go. This, for the record, is not for a professional paper for publication, but a student paper that you submit for a college class. It usually includes, at a minimum, title page, page numbers, text, and reference list. It may also include tables, figures, and appendices, and if your instructor or institution require it, a running head and an abstract. Here we go. We're going to start with a Word document. We're going to open it up. We're going to save it. APA 7 student paper template. That way, each time you have a paper to do, this work is already pre-done. Here goes. Under the Home tab in Word, you're going to select one of these approved fonts. This one is my favorite. Now, still under the Home tab, we're going to select double spacing for all. Remember, there's a couple of exceptions. That's the title page usually has the extra double space between the title of the paper and the byline. And sometimes in tables, the text inside it can be single spaced or even 1.5 rather than double spaced. This is how it looks. Under the layout tab, we're going to select margins, one inch all the way around. Easy peasy. Back in the home tab, select the align text to the left, leave the right margin jacket. Awesome. Now, we're going to insert page numbers, top of page, header, and right. Excellent. We're going to now go to the title page. We're going to center align the title page. This is our one exception to the left align. Our title of the paper is in bold, centered about three or four lines down from the top. We start with the name of the author or authors. There's an extra uh, space between the title and this byline. And then we do not put professional titles in our name, just first, middle, last. Underneath that, affiliation. Underneath that, the course. Underneath that, the instructor name. And finally, the assignment due date. It looks like this. Follow the format for the month, day, and year. And of course, your professor can get titles. Here are some examples. If your authors come from different institutions, and finally, after the title page, we do a page break. Either we're going to put an abstract or we start with the text right away. If we start the first page of text after the abstract, it's going to be usually the introduction. So we don't need to title that introduction. That's redundant. Just start by tabbing, level one heading for the title. And then if you look at the titles under that, there are five levels. Follow this format. Outstanding. It looks something like this. The introductory paragraph right under the title of the paper. Notice I tabbed the first line. Tabbing is 0.5 of an inch. And then you continue blah, blah, blah. The grammar, which absolutely rocks. Here's my level two heading. Again, I tab and I begin writing. Then I decide I need subcategories. So I create a third level heading. First accident, after which I tab start my paragraph. The grammar, which is the coolest person on the planet. She's teaching you some awesome stuff right now. Second accident, here we go, noticing a pattern. More blah, blah, and you may need to divide that into a level four heading, let's say pilot error, which may take a fifth level heading, which there we go with sleep deprivation and complacency. Looks like that. Setting up these Word docs, easy peasy. Use the tab key for that 0.5 of an indent. Remember, though, abstracts do not get indented on that first line. They are flush to the left, and the reference list has a hanging indent, but more on that later. Your running head, should your professor or institution want one, is a flush to the left in all caps, abbreviated version of the paper title that appears on the top of each page. And it doesn't have to have the same words that the title has, or in the same order, but never go beyond 50 characters, including letters, punctuation, and spaces. And please, please, please do not write running head colon, because we know that's a running head. Outstanding. Looks something like that. For your abstract, Remember, it's a brief comprehensive summary of the contents of the paper. Make sure it's no more than 250 words and it has its own page right after the title page. And the word abstract is in bold and centered. And there's one paragraph then with no indentation. Looks like this. Outstanding. Did you notice there are keywords there? Why? Some people put a keyword section at the bottom. There are words, phrases, or acronyms that describe the most important aspects of the paper. 
Like for indexing in databases, it helps readers find your work during a search. Remember, use the word keywords colon in italics, indent 0.5 of an inch, and follow it by the words in lowercase. Capitalize proper nouns, separate all of them by commas, list them in any order. They don't need to be alphabetized, but remember, never put a period at the end. And if they run into a second line, do not intend indent the second line. And again, it looks like this down at the bottom here. Perfect. Moving on. This is what the paper starts to look like in the inside of the text. And we're going to talk about in-text citations next. Recall the paper starts out with the title in bold centered. Text is always left aligned, double space paragraph with the first line of each paragraph indented with the tap button. We use the headings. I've already gone over those. Do not add extra line breaks in between your paper. It should flow seamlessly from one part to the next with no breaks. Outstanding. We follow the author date format unless there's a direct quote and then you add a page number. If there's multiple pages, the P period becomes PP period. And if they're not continuous, then you don't put a dash, you put a comma. Outstanding. Personal communications cannot be recognized replicated so you do not put them in the references just in text and it looks like that outstanding here are some examples of in-text citations when you have one two three or more authors and then if you have a block quote that is 40 or more words you do not use the quotation marks you start a new line and you tab it and then at the end after you reference the source in parentheses you remember to never add a period should you have two paragraphs of a block quote, the second paragraph starts another 0.5 in. So there's two tabs, so essentially one inch from the left. If you insert your own words into a quote, always use the square brackets. If you take words out of a quote because it's too lengthy and cumbersome, ellips ellipses are what you put in, those three little dots. And if you see a typo in the original, then you're going to put SIC italicized in your square brackets. Outstanding. Tables. If you do have a table, flush to the left, you put the title, table one, followed by table two. You put the name underneath it, double spaced it, it's in italics. And at the bottom of the table, you might want a note to explain it. You can find out more in the APA guide, pages 210 to 224. Figures, just like tables. Figure one in bold, and then the name of the figure in italics. Remember, it's double spaced. Any notes at the bottom may also include a source where you got that picture from. And if you want more on tape on figures, page 234 to 250 of your APA guide. Finally, the reference list. This is a reliable way to, for readers to locate the works that you cited to acknowledge previous scholarship. We always follow the author date title source format. We label the page that contains references, references, and we bold it, capitalize the word references and we center it and then we alphabetize everything underneath that remember that hanging indent i told you about let's talk about that now we go to the home tab of our word doc and this is what we're going to do we're going to click on this and we're going to click on line spacing options under that we're going to select the hanging for the indent and hit ok to save that outstanding that will make it look like this if you're referencing a book this is the hanging indent that we're talking about underneath the first line. If we're talking about a journal, this is how it looks. A YouTube video, a website. More examples can be found in the APA guide, pages 313 to 352. There's also legal reference pages that you should know about on 355 to 368. Remember to alphabetize your references. And finally, this is what it looks like completed. If you put any material that supplements your paper's content but would be distracting inside the text of the paper, you place it in an appendix after any references, footnotes, or tables and figures, and then you label it Appendix A, Appendix B, and so on and so forth, you must reference it at least once in the text so people know to go to the back of the paper and look for it. Great source on the APA 7th edition, either their textbook or their website. Sample student paper to make sure you've dotted every I, crossed every T, pages 61 through 67, and I promised would be in in under 10 minutes. Thank you very much.